the lights begin to come up at bb and Center. Tonight's starting goalies brought to you by your local New England Audi dealers. Experience Audi Quattro all-wheel drive tonight. Tuka Rask. Check below the line on that slab. Lifetime against Florida, 7-1, a 972 save percentage. Three shutouts in his eight lifetime games. Tim Thomas, well, his record with the Bruins in 378 games, 196 wins, 921 save percentage in his time with Boston. He's gone totally generic with the mask, at least for the moment. Thomas missed four straight games with a strained groin. The game is on. Patrice Bergeron wins the opening faceoff. Once again, it's Brad Marchand on his left wing after Riley Smith had gotten a few games there and even skated there in the pregame warm-up. Marchand across the front for Bergeron, but he can't tap it past the defenseman Tom Gilbert. Dennis Seidenberg paired with Matt Barkowski, Adam McQuaid, a healthy scratch among the defensemen tonight. Brad Boyd, former Bruin, gets checked by Barkowski in the corner, and his one-time linemate, Bergeron, gets it out to Erickson in the neutral zone. Now, if you're wondering the way Florida wants to play tonight, they're going to try to play an up-tempo game, try to play with speed, particularly their forwards, and watch for their defense. They like to come forward. They like to pitch. They like to get active. Great four- and five-man attacks. When you talk about a guy like Campbell back in the Kulikov, Gilbert even will jump in the play. Gilroy's a skater. They all like to get involved and get up ice. And if the Bruins manage the puck well, particularly in center ice, they will get opportunities. Got a question for you, Frick. We just had a weird carom as we look at Kevin Zanin on the hybrid ice, which is not blown dead until the player gets to the face-off dots. If it's going to be hybrid icing, because the Bruin is obviously going to win the race, but the puck takes a crazy bounce and it goes in off a wrap. Does the hybrid icing negate that, or does that go count? I have no idea. I would say that, that uh, the, it's, it's on net, so it wouldn't be icing. No, no, if it takes a, a weird care of it. Well, well, I guess we're going to find out someday. <laughs> it's, got to, it's still got to cross the goal line yep. to be icing. Well, right. if it crosses the goal line into the net, it can't be icing. Well, it has right. to be a goal. Right. But I, I don't think I understand the question. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, won't be the last time. <laughs> Tori Krug sends it toward Thomas. Kulikov can't get it out of the corner. Krug guns it in down low and bounces over a Gimlet stick. I'll try to explain later when I have about an hour and a half. Sort of like when you got to explain the punchline of a joke. Must not be that funny, huh? Sounds like some of the conversations you were having last night. <laughs> With myself. <laughs> right. Jonathan Huberto, the Calder Trophy winner from last season, Rookie of the Year in the NHL, wearing number 11. He brings it up ice. Now, that's hybrid icing there. So if that puck takes a weird bounce off the corner boards and then comes on goal and spins in over the line somehow. Yeah, no goal. No goal. Thank you. Let's put that one to rest. Thank you. First run to take the face off. And Erickson stabs the puck forward. And now it is Riley Smith up there. First run closes, goes right in on Thomas, and goes a tumbling through the crease as Thomas stands his ground. Erickson cross ice. With drive from Dougie Hamilton returning to the lineup after a couple of healthy scratches. First run forward to the goal line. The Bruins have had almost all of the puck so far in this game. Smith cycles it to Bergeron, back to Hamilton, across the jar, the drive, glove saved by Thomas. He'll have to take another defensive zone faceoff. Now, Patrice Bergeron's one of the guys that you got to focus on, Jack, when you're looking for a little bit more offense for Boston. He can be a trendsetter when it comes to hard work, fundamental hockey, creating opportunities, and going in the ugly areas in the offensive zone. Protects the puck real well. Extends that left skate as he leans in with the left shoulder to protect it textbook on how to take the puck to the net not allow the opponent to sweep check it away from you Seidenberg and Barkowski the defensive pair with the Chris Kelly line out there Brad Marchand and Jordan Caron skating the wings Scotty Upshaw he's got a lot of hustle in his game with Thomas Kopetsky and 
the rather large Nick Bugstad. Here's Bugstad in the high slot. Through Rask's glove, he tumbles back, and the puck squirts past the post. A dicey moment for Tuka Rask as the puck popped right out of his webbing and seemed to be tumbling across the goal line. It's a good place to shoot the puck if you Bugstad, but you still are pretty far from the net. And uh, Tuka Rask kind of took a look at himself after that puck broke off the glove. It wasn't that difficult to save. Campbell trying to split the seam. Bjugstad for Fleischman. Saved by Rask. Fleischman with the beautiful forehand to backhand and tried to scoop it over the glove side, but Rask stoles it. Yeah, Seidenberg and uh, Bartkowski playing together. They both got to the middle of the ice in the defensive zone. Play the puck, play the man. They got a little confused, and all of a sudden, Fleischman's wide open with speed. And that time, he had to make a big-time stop. The first one was on Bukestad in the high slot. This is a play a lot of teams like to use. The Bruins will use it. I don't think that puck was deflected at all. Uh, maybe took, it took his eye off it, but it breaks off the glove, but it stays out. And then the breakdown by the Bruins, the miscommunication allows Fleischman to walk in and made a move to the backhand. Rass stayed right with him. Seidenberg jumps right up on the rush, sends Paye in. Paye closes. He scores! Daniel Paye, high stick side. The Bruins are up 1-0. Take ice when it's available, and that's exactly what Seidenberg does deep in his own zone. He pulls that puck from the circle around the hash mark, and he gets his feet moving. He recognizes potential three on two. If I can pull this puck and get up into the rush, he's got Thornton on the right and Pai on the left, and a great decision by Seidenberg, knowing it, that Pai was up ice with great speed. He puts it out in front of him, allows Pai to maintain that level of speed in order to get in on Tim Thomas. And a heads-up shot. Thomas is slightly going down. Doesn't have to be a hard shot, just accurate. Get rid of it quick and elevate. But quite the turn of events as Rask robs Fleischman at one end. And then Seidenberg sends Paye away on the wing. Lurchy out muscles Matthias, who stays with it, gets the puck to Gott. Jesse Winchester overskates the puck in the corner. Lucic caves it in, and then Chara finishes off Winchester. But here's Matthias, a really hard-working wing on the near side. Hamilton sprays the puck to the far side. Chara picks it up. His pass behind Krejci. The Bruins a little out of sync here. Yeah, 6'4", 220, Matthias. And he gets around the ice pretty good. Yep. Pretty good head on him and tremendous effort. Number 18 in red tonight. Thomas Fleischman denied by Lucic in the neutral zone. Mike Weaver pops it up. Tori Krug catches a can of corn. Backs in, then gives it away. Alexander Barkov, the youngest player in the NHL. Smith taps the backhand down to the corner. Tim Thomas lets it roll. Bergeron takes it, throws it in front. Erickson shot deflected. Smith for Bergeron. Michaela gets a stick on that. Krug can't ship it. Cleanly down the wing past Brad Boys and Boys skates it out to the red line. Boychuk takes the puck on the post. DDD off the end boards. Krug reverses to Erickson just short of the center line. His pass behind Smith. Krug goes cross corner and the Bruins will change out some of their personnel. The Kelly line once again with Caron and Marchand, Seidenberg and Barkowski, the defensive pair. Puck flips into the Boston bench. Yeah, I remember growing up as a kid and watching the Bruins play. They play the Montreal Canadiens, and this kind of sequence always seemed to go against the Bruins. <laughs> They'd have a great opportunity at one end, get denied, maybe by a Dryden, and then all of a sudden the Canadiens score up by as well. It's the Bruins doing it to the Panthers here in the first period. The chance for Fleischman to move to the backhand. Rask robs him. And then a nice pass by Seidenberg to send Paye in, who protects the puck well and chips it up high over the blocker to give the Bruins the lead. Florida's lost five out of six. It's in a very, very difficult division. No longer in the southeast, where you might finish third if you don't finish ninth <laughs> in the conference. And the importance emotionally of scoring the early goal. Yeah, a team that has some uh, level of doubt in themselves because of their record and how they've lost some games. You get an early lead, that doubt creeps in. Good Branson knocks down Perron's pass intended for Marshawn. Kelly gets back in the play and deflects it back to Matt Gilroy. 
The Holby Baker winner when he was at BU. Chara spoons the backhand ahead to Krejci. Krejci breaks up ice, gives it middle to Lucic. He one-hands it to Hamilton on the break. The rig shot stick saved by Thomas. Again on the far side. Taps the puck in behind the goal. Klyukov runs into the Krejci check, and he can't get it out of the zone. Krejci contests for the puck. Now Lucic against Huberdeau on the boards. Klyukov. Gilroy off the boards to Chris Versteeg. Versteeg loses it in his skates, gets punished on the Aguila check. Huberto will settle things down. We're wondering where Scott Gomez is. He's with the Panthers now. He's centering that line with Huberto on it. Daniel Pye, the goal scorer to Gregory Campbell, a one-time Panther. Campbell back to Pye. He closes. Tried to get the backhand through Campbell, but could not do it. Gregory Campbell, I'm mean, sorry, it's Ryan Campbell, not Gregory Campbell. There's Gregory Campbell. Back to Boyd. Chuck the drive. Blocker saved by Thomas Thornton. Goes through. Keeps the puck alive with his sheer effort in traffic. And the puck played with a high stick by the Bruins. There will be a faceoff just outside the blue line. Daniel Pae scores his first of the season. The Bruins are ahead of Florida. It's Honda key matchup. Dale Talon put together a winner in Chicago. And he's been doing pretty well with his picks here in Florida. At third overall in 2011, Jonathan Huberto, all he did was win the Calder Trophy as the Rookie of the Year, Jack. You've already pointed that out tonight. And then Alexander Barkov, the very impressive number two overall pick. The youngest guy in the NHL, as you already pointed out, and uh, off to a terrific start in his first seven games in the NHL. Barkov's father was a professional hockey player. Barkov himself holds two passports, one for Finland and one for Russia. Corey Krug up the boards. Thornton can't control. Good Branson snaps the wrist shot into Gregory Campbell's skates. Thornton, a clever little kick to Campbell. Now Boychuk north and south for Paye on the off wing. Paye holds, looks for Thornton. He turns and a save by Thomas with the stick. Scotty Upshaw sprays it to Kopetsky approaching the Boston line. Barkowski plays the body. Kopetsky goes cross corner. Barkov looking for Kopetsky. Barkowski plays the body all the way and deprives Kopetsky of the chance in the slot. Erickson's pass too far forward for the oncoming Bergeron. You know, one of the drills the Bruins did at morning skate today was, uh, you know, D to D and then indirect off the boards. Long passes through center ice. The Bruins have already used a long direct pass on the goal, Seidberg to Pai, but they've been using that stretch for forward a lot here in the early going. Erickson with Bergeron on his left. Erickson tries to get it up the wall. Brian Campbell makes the play out to center. Barkov finds Louis Erickson, and Erickson tape to tape to Smith. Tries to toe drag, goes inside, and just misses on the glove side. Naked Branson cross-checks him right in front of the paint. But apparently outside the referee's view. Seidenberg takes the Erickson feed, reps one, saved by Thomas. Juicy bouncing rebound, but Joel Ward is not there. Whoops, wrong team, sorry. <laughs> Flashback. <laughs> it's off of Kelly to Marshawn. He brings it in over the line, and it's offside. And Riley Smith takes that cross-ice pass, a heads-up pass by Louis Erickson, right on the tape in stride. A little pump fake. Gilbert bites, slips it through him, tries to go like Pae, quickly up top under the crossbar, just misses on the glove side. Six shots on goal in a row in this game for the Bruins. Coach Julian talking about Riley Smith's growing confidence, and maybe that's an indication of it, when he's willing to make a one-on-one -on -one move with a little bit of mustard on it. Scott Gomez up ahead, Char knocks the puck away at the Boston line, Caron through the seam to Marshawn, the return on the wall for Caron, but the puck squirts away to Dmitry Kulikov. Caron plays the body, Huberto goes back to Weaver, now ahead to Versteeg, he angles it cross ice, Huberto chips the puck to the end wall to Gomez. Huberto finding Gilroy going down the slot. The defenseman all the way to the right wing corner. Now Huberto back of Rask. Turns it to the forehand. Gomez in front for Gilroy. Clanking around off the apron. Now it's Huberto on opposing left wing corner. Good Branson fakes the shot. Huberto at the dot. Around to run. Leg saved by Rask. Took a Rask with another beauty as Huberto got off a really good effort. Now here's Gomez. Huberto lurking, Gilroy going old school as his helmet got knocked off in the sequence. Good Branson 
scoops the backhand around. Hamilton keeps it going for Marshawn. Marshawn feels the pressure coming from Gotch. Can't get it out of the zone. Gotch backhands it off the corner glass, and Rask will calm things down. 9-11 to go, first period. The Bruins leading Jonathan Huberto and the Florida Panthers thanks to some nifty Tuka Rask goaltending. Bruins lead the Panthers 1-0. It's the little things that the Bruins do well, which makes them one of the elite teams. Face-offs, you got to win them. Puck battles, you got to win right there. Matt Bartkowski, what a nice little backhand feed across the ice, about 10 feet in length. Seidberg had slid over, able to handle that pass with his skate, jump into the play, create the three yards too. Rask has to hold the forward against Matthias, who redirected the puck from just outside the crease, and the Bruins have a three-on-two off ice. Krejci had a little trouble getting away from Matthias. Here's Krug trying to stick handle through. A hooking call coming against Florida. And Gindla with the extra skater on in Patrice Bergeron as the Bruins set up in anticipation of a power play. A little bouncing puck comes to Matthias. And the hooking call is on the way. The Bruins will test out the power play. Well, I just gave the Bruins some love for doing the little things on a faceoff that led to a goal. And as we were coming out of replay, <laughs> the Panthers get a quick chance off a faceoff in the Bruins' end. But then the Bruins get something up ice with Krejci carrying the puck. And on the back check, Matthias, a little too much stick work. He'll go for a hook. And the Bruin power play, which they also worked on that morning skate today, looking to improve on those two for 19 numbers that they got right now. Bruins power play brought to you by Mazda. Krejci's wrist shot to Branson, knocks it back past Krug. He slips and goes down. Kopetsky pulls it away from Krejci. Florida just wants to change out. Upshaw, the front penalty killer, facing Tory Krug. He's got Lucic breaking on the left side. Up the middle for Charo, who was working at the attacking line, but he couldn't turn the puck to his forehand side. Rask scrapes it over to the right to a Ginlet. He goes wing to wing. Krug chips off the glass. A Ginlet going after it. Good Branson looks for some leverage underneath and gets to the board. Charo over there wins another puck battle. Charo holds, it's off Upshaw's stick. Upshaw scoops it to the line and pass Krejci. And the Bros were doing the dirty work, coming up with the puck. Charo tried to get it back to the right point of Krejci and had it knocked down. Lucic to again, look to Lucic to the corner. Lucic sends it around the rim for Krejci. He holds, now goes cross ice for Hamilton to Krejci at the middle of the line through the triangle. Iginla backs up, sends it right through the crease. Charo couldn't redirect. Lucic and Krejci, social out at the right point. Hamilton to the rotating Aginla, back to Krejci, down low, Chara in front, pass to Aginla, here's Hamilton with the room to drive, goes well wide, comes all the way to Krejci, back at the point, facing Winchester, now it's Hamilton, his blast scores, hits something in front, you can hear the puck tick, either off a leg or a stick, Zdeno Chara with the giant screen in front of Thomas, not sure he got it, but it's a power play goal for the Bruins in a 2-0 lead. And this is vintage Dougie Hamilton. Talk about the young guys, all three of them in the lineup tonight. Krug, Hamilton, Bartkowski. What Hamilton will definitely give you is that offensive instincts, his mobility, the ability to work the blue line laterally, changes the, uh, the angle of the shot, allows Char to position himself well in front of Tim Thomas, and a beautiful, accurate shot. Here's the deflect off Campbell, change direction ever so slightly, and the Bruins with a power play goal. It's always a good feeling. You work on it the morning skate, both units, each end of the ice, and even though it's a morning skate, you've got to get resistance from the penalty killers, even though they got a game to play that night, but you've got to make use of your time to work on things, and it pays off. And there's nothing like getting back into the lineup and hitting a hummer like that. Erickson shot to flex and Thomas has to stick it wide. Right about at this point that Thomas is wondering where the six foot nine inch number 33 is to play for him. <laughs> he was in the neighborhood. He was. <laughs> Wearing a different color sweater than Thomas is tonight. Bergeron past Gilroy. Erickson whacks the puck off the boards and it rides on edge. Kulikov turns his goal, pulls the puck away from Gregory Campbell, hits Fleischman in stride. Fleischman poke checked away by Tory Cruz into Gregory Hamm. 
Campbell skates. Now Thornton drives the puck off the kick plate right of Thomas. Gilbert takes the hit to move the puck to the rookie Barkoff. Boys kicks to the stick. Now off of Krug skates. Thornton all the way back against Barkoff. Boys in the middle for flights to the quick release. Stopped by Boychuk. Brian Campbell all the way past Barkoff to the corner. Now Gilbert hustles, turns it off his backhand down the boards past Barkoff. Boys coming out of the corner on the cycle. Bounces it middle of the line. Brian Campbell into the circle for Fleischman off Boychuk's leg. Gregory Campbell can't get much behind the scoop. Gilbert goes D to D. And these are important minutes, Jack, right now. Don't think this game's going to be easy just because you just scored a power play goal. Remember, Rass has had to make a couple of big time stops already in this game. Don't think this game is over because we've got two fairly easy goals. Upshaw stood up by Boychuk in perfect back pressure from Daniel Pae as the Bruins execute defensively in their own zone. Yeah, the two best shifts that Florida's had, Jack, is when their defense have been all over the place in the offensive zone. The Huberto line with Gilroy jumping in, with Branson jumping in, right there, Campbell very active on that shift. Kelly comes over and knocks down Kopetsky's pass. Puck bunts bouncing around an awful lot tonight. Dougie Hamilton rolls the puck down to the corner. Caron wheels it back to Char, the one-touch pass for Hamilton. Caron with a nice stick lift against Weaver. Now tries the shot and bounces down off of Bjugstad's leg. Char and Kopetsky. Kopetsky, Caron finishes his check. Bouncing puck to Dougie Hamilton. He flattens it and sends it over to Char. John Mathias, who was in the box when the power play goal was scored, the front four down. Gilroy, the hard backhand for Mathias at the attacking line. The puck gets away to Seidenberg. Hartkowski to Seidenberg. He's got Krejci who loves to carry the puck. Krejci gains the line. He closes. Saved by Thomas. He got it on the inside of the blocker. Marcel Gotch absorbs the hit from Barkowski and coughs up possession. Seidenberg. Up to the attacking line, Lucic redirects. Yeah, good execution through the neutral zone by Ross. Find David Krejci in stride, lead him, let him skate. And he just took open ice down that right side, created the two-on-one with Lucic on the net drive. Florida unable to make plays out of its own zone. The Bruins with some tremendous zone time in the first period. Scott Gomez with McDinla chasing, and there's Riley Smith on the angle. Smith taps to Charo over to Hamilton. Hamilton carries past the falling for Stieg. Smith on the pivot inside the line now. Smacks the wrist shot off the end boards, intentionally killing it there. Here's Erickson in front for Smith. Couldn't get the puck down and pass Thomas. Char on the quick rotation. Wrist it intentionally wide back into the crease. And Thomas covers. The Bruins swept the season series last year. And they're 9-2 and two in their last 11 against Florida. Dougie Hamilton gives them a chance to go 10 and 2 in their last 12. Bruins extend their lead to two against the Florida Panthers. It came on the power play. Right side of your screen. Dougie Hamilton with the initial drive. David Krejci able to keep this puck in. But then Hamilton starts to move towards David Krejci. And as he moves towards the puck, he's improving his angle. And he's generating a little momentum to get a lot more on the drive with Char and Campbell battling in front of the net to create the screen. David Krejci picking up his team-leading fifth assist on Hamilton's first of the season, and again with his second assist. Smith chops the puck wide. Riley Smith hasn't had a whole lot of puck luck yet. Playing very well, but seems every time he goes to take the shot, either the puck is ramping up off to somebody else's stick, or it's not sitting flat for him. But Claude Julian effusive in his praise of Riley Smith and how he fits in. The familiarity with Louis Erickson on the other side of Bergeron also doesn't hurt him. Yeah, and, and the teammates will say, uh, you know, to a guy like Riley Smith, you're getting the opportunity. Keep playing the way you're playing. High aid to the end board. Gregory Campbell steps around. Mike Weaver tries to throw it in front. Thomas gets a block on it. Thornton wins the puck from Weaver to Gregory Campbell to Thornton. Back to the point to Barkowski. Fakes the shot, draws Kopetsky. Seinberg's one-timer and a save by Thomas with Pae right there. Don't miss any of the hard-hitting action and the excitement of Bruins hockey at TD Garden during the month of October. Limited tickets and executive suite rentals are available for this season's must-see matchups. To purchase tickets or to rent a suite, visit bostonbruins.com.
Riley Smith, 22 years old. A lot of motivation to stay in the NHL. $900,000 cap hit if he stays in the NHL. He gets paid 67.5 if he goes to the AHL. A few more buses down there, too. <laughs> As Tom McVie said. Play better. Uh, he also said it's just like a plane, just a longer runway. <laughs> Bruins ice the puck. Well, here it is, minute and 40 to go in the first. And as you were saying just a few moments ago, an important juncture in the game. Florida would be delighted to go into the room down just by a goal after the way the Bruins have played in the first. Yeah, and you've raised that self-doubt of uh, with this Florida Panther team right now. Sure, it's a 60-minute game. You're you're just about a third of the way through. You got a a comfortable two-goal lead, but this is where the Bruins, as they really try to progress as a team with new faces for the core group, they know what it takes to win. And these are the games where you get real tough right now. You buckle down, you shut it down for the rest of this period, meaning don't give Florida any kind of hope at all that they're going to get anything done here in the final minute and a half. Be sure to tune over to Nesson immediately following the conclusion of ALCS Game 5 for Red Sox Extra Innings Live. Dennis Eckersley, the special analyst, commentator tonight. Florida's goal differential in the first period is now down to minus 7. 29th out of 30 teams, only dreadful Buffalo is worse. A one-timer from Hamilton and a leg saved by Thomas. He has seen a lot of rubber. 14 shots on goal by Boston in the first period. And another McVeeism. Catch up hockey is losing hockey. Yep. Dougie Hamilton all the way past the dot. Final minute of the first period. Krejci comes down and steals the puck from Matthias. Goes corner. Rotates it to Hamilton. Hamilton's reached out through the screen and Thomas makes a save. Again, they're drawing a lot of attention. Hamilton with a shattered stick has to go back to the Boston bench. He'll just change out with Boychuk as Gotch knocks the puck to the end wall. That's a terrific shift by the Krejci line. Puck possession in the offensive zone. You're trying to finish the period off the right way. Hey, maybe you extend the lead to three, but you're certainly not in your own zone. Patrice Bergeron through the neutral zone where the Bruins have dominated. A closer analytical look at that between periods with Dale and Billy coming up just moments away. Erickson swings the puck to Bergeron. Couldn't get the oomph on it that he wanted. Now here's Erickson in front of the Florida bench. He gets double teamed and pinwheeled on the check. And Tory Krug will just bleed the period dry. You gotta like the period. You like the scoreboard. Two nothing Boston. The fact that they got a power play goal, something they worked on this morning. But keep in mind the stops, the two of them, one in particular on Fleischman by Tuka Rask, a timely stop just prior to the Pie goal. Well, Tim a time being outshone by Tuka time so far, Dale. Boston Bruins hockey on Nesson is brought to you by Subaru of New England by Kettle One. By Toyota's official website for deals, via Toyota.com. By Carey in theaters tomorrow. And by your local New England Audi dealers. Alongside Andy Brickley with Jamie Erdahl at ice level and our Nesson production crew, I'm Jack Edwards. The goal by Daniel Pae about four minutes in and then a power play blast from Dougie Hamilton about nine minutes after that have given the Bruins a 2-0 lead. Is this game all about Tim Thomas playing for the Florida Panthers? Only if you let it be that way. Jamie has more. Well, Julian's been fielding questions about facing Tim Thomas for the past four days, but no matter how the question was phrased, Julian's approach remains steadfast, saying that he is preparing for Tim Thomas in a Panthers jersey like he would any other goalie in the league. You lose players like that that were well respected and liked in the dressing room and you got to turn the page and you know we got to do the same thing here with Timmy it's like Timmy's got a new uh, career here going on with Florida and we've got our own that we got to take care of so it's it's more about uh, you know putting the past aside for this game and, and and looking forward to doing the job that we came here for and that's to win a hockey game. Brick 11 years in the NHL for you and uh, you played for a number of teams and I'm sure you played against teammates who did great things alongside you and 
and for your teams. How do you dismiss that emotionally when he's wearing the wrong color sweater all of a sudden? Well, first of all, uh, just to share a quick story, I lined up against Dave Brown after being teammates with him in Philadelphia. When Thanks, I anyway. He said, what are you doing? Are you shadowing me? You know. <laughs> so there are some funny conversations that happen at ice level when you play against ex-teammates. But uh, no, and I think Claude says it exactly right. As, as far as the, the players themselves, not, not, uh, not a coach or a head coach, but that's how you feel. This is just another goaltender that we are going to try to beat. The focus is more on trying to find the rhythm of their offense as a team. So the two goals in the first period, that goes a long way to get the Bruins in the right frame of mind because we showed you at the top of the broadcast. They need more production. If you're swinging over from the ALCS, this is the Bruins trying to beat Tim Thomas and having a pretty good time of it. Up 2-0 in Florida. Thomas down. Bergeron off the side of the goal. Throws it right into the crease. Alexander Barkov, number two overall draft choice, brings it out. Dennis Seidenberg slows the rush at the Boston line. Matt Bartkowski off the end boards. A couple of goals in the first period. Dan Whoa, here's a giveaway! And Fleischman misses over the top on Tuka Rask as the German engineering had something wrong in the gears. Riley Smith wins the race for the puck, and Thomas Cliff just cleans him out. Smith slow to get up to all fours and just now getting back on his skate. So if you're just tuning in, you tuned in at a pretty good time. <laughs> Here's Kopetsky dropping it off. Scott Gomez's shot rattles off Dougie Hamilton's legs. Hamilton had a power play goal in the first for the Bruins. Now, Riley Smith, uh, you know, a set play by Seidenberg. Seidenberg handled the puck cleanly the second time, and he used that long-distance stretch forward without trying to make a pass, just put it the length of the ice with the hybrid. You're going to be the first guy down there that won't be icing and now an offensive chances there. Here's Lucic with a left wing break for Aguila. The airborne tip and Thomas diving in trademark fashion to get a piece of the puck as it came across the crease. Coverdo, the long shot in on Rash. Dougie Hamilton taps to Chara. Yeah, just to finish that thought, Jack, uh, Riley Smith put himself in a vulnerable position when he tried to handle that puck, cut to the net, and make a move on Thomas, and he got cleaned out when he was in that vulnerable position. Eric Goodbranson throws it on Rask. All right, Gilroy tracks it down in the neutral zone, chipping up the wall. Upshaw for Good Branson. A good read by Kelly, and Good Branson has to go outside the line to chip the puck back in. Gilroy for Upshaw. Wide of Rask comes right back in front. The Bruins a little dicey in their own zone here early in the second period. And as to the fact that you got the liveliest boards that we've seen in the league in some time. Doesn't matter where it hits, the board's low. That puck is coming off it lively. Got to look at Riley Smith on that set play. Seidenberg sends it the length of the ice. And there's your ice level view of Weaver finishing his check. Smith wanted to try to cut to the middle. He gets sealed off by Thomas. And now Weaver's able to make body contact. Clean hit. But you're vulnerable and you're at a dangerous distance from the boards with the inability to protect yourself. We were 35 years old in his 12th NHL season. And we'll finally have some bargaining power at the end of this season. If he doesn't sign a renewal with Florida, he'll be one of the eight unrestricted free agents at season 10 for the Panthers. Gilbert's long wrist shot, tantalizing, but nobody could redirect it inside the post. Thornton off Cruz gets it back. Boychuk knocks the puck out of the air. Pae draws Brian Campbell. Now Gregory Campbell looking for Pae. Shot from the bat angle, and Gordon gets it right on Thomas Krug with a what-the-heck shot. And that sails wide of the post as well. All the way back to Boychuk to Krug. He closes. Pae rotating high, but the pass comes all the way back to the Boston line. Yeah, Pae let it go. He thought Johnny Boychuk was directly behind him, but he wasn't. Now Thornton. The snapshot goes off Gilbert's leg. Boychuk whacks the backhand down to the corner. Gilbert takes it right back. Looking for Fleischman, who had a golden chance in the first period. Here's Boys. Boys at the dot. Saved by Rask, and he squeezes the knees. Vote for the Amica coverage play of the week, and then it'll win a $100 gift certificate to the Pro Shop at TD Garden, courtesy of Nesson.
Enter now at Nesson.com slash Amica Coverage Cam. By the way, Red Sox Extra Innings live airs immediately following this game on Nesson, or rather the ALCS Game 5 on Nesson. Extended in-depth team coverage. And we bring you up close to the Sox in their effort to bring it back with two chances to close out the series. Napoli is just homered, and the Red Sox have the lead in Game 5. Bergeron on the end boards against Weaver. Puck trickles through to the corner. Kopetsky, Smith puts the body on him. Erickson taps back to Barkowski. The shot tipped in front by Bergeron, and Thomas makes a save. Kuberto tries to wheel away from Erickson, who harasses him. Gomez coming back to the defensive slot and throws the puck out to the center. How many times already tonight, Frick, have the Panthers been unable to make a play out of their own end and the Bruins take the puck back in the neutral zone? Well, the Bruins take good angles with body position and stick position most nights. Whether it's on forecheck or back check, they're so well schooled in it. Fast clamps down on the little deflection off Huberto. You know, and if you have those fundamental skills down, as a strategy and as part of your game planning, what it allows you D to do is to stay up at the blue line, stay up at center ice. We talked about the importance of center ice against a team like Florida. If you dominate in that area and force Florida to have to make plays coming out of their own zone with pressure, you're going to get opportunity. Barkoff flanked by Fleischman and Boys. To Branson's wrist shot off Barkoff. Boys, the blind tip to the slot. Aguila. Gives it away to Good Branson at the middle of the line. Krejci tries to sweep the puck forward to Lucci. Here comes Fleischman barreling down the left side. Boychuk keeps him on the perimeter. Fleischman can't throw it in front. Barkoff to Fleischman. Has Boys at the post. The puck comes through Boys as Boychuk was locked down on him. Now Matt Gilroy. Drops it back to Good Branson. Out to center to Barkoff. The 18-year-old ahead to Boychuk. The puck bounces past him. Fleischman trying to get it to Boys, but it's head high and comes all the way through. Hey, Gidler, instead of making the fancy pass this time, just does the simple thing and gets it out to center. Lucic was offside, thus couldn't touch the puck. Gilroy to Upshaw. He bounces it ahead of Jesse Winchester. Winchester barrels into the corner. Upshaw tries to dig it loose. It's been quite a while since Jesse Winchester has scored a goal. Played last year, all of last season in Finland. Here comes Ryan Campbell. Up shot for Winchester, but it's behind him. Strangely enough, the last goal Jesse Winchester scored in the NHL was on the 8th of December 2011. And on that night, Tim Thomas was in goal for the Bruins against the Florida Panthers. Jose Theodore. Had a 40-save shutout that night. Thomas only gave up one goal. Florida also scored an empty net. Bizarre little piece of minutia we stumbled across today. Bergeron skates down the wing. Gomez takes him down. Weaver. Gilbert. Ahead for Gomez. Smith wraps up Weaver trying to return the insult. It was Weaver that decked Riley Smith earlier in the period. Gomez spun around, but the puck sits for Florida. Kopetsky gains the line. Pulvido is great in tight quarters, blows an edge. Gomez goes water skiing on Riley Smith and gets away with it. Stick parallel to the icing, some good traction there on the blade. Seidenberg in front of the penalty bench. Weaver whacks the backhand over to Kulikov. Good stat ahead for oh. Stieg. The chip pass from Matthias. He's got good speed, but Barkowski whacks the puck away. Kulikov, the defenseman in the left wing corner. He could throw a blanket over three Panthers there for a moment. Yeah, we've seen Campbell up ice this period. Now you see Kulikov. We saw Gilroy try to jump into the play. They try to activate their D. Again, we will re-emphasize the Bruins using more of the stretch play through the neutral zone because the deep before that likes to move forward. And when they've had puck possession, the Panthers, in the offensive zone, and they had it for a couple of shifts back in the first period, it can be problematic in coverage. 
Barkowski with a serpentine route through the neutral zone, chips it to the right wing corner, goes in, wins the puck from Good Branson, throws it off the paddle of Thomas. Gregory Campbell keeping the puck alive with help from Thornton. Good Branson behind his goal. The Bruins will get fresh legs out on the ice. It'll be the Krejci line with Lucic and Aginla. Pulyikov, center circle, it skips past boys. Through wins the race to the dots for the hybrid icing call. The Bruins and Mass Lottery are proud to salute the men and women of the United States Armed Forces. Nominate a soldier of the community who you think deserves an eight-spoke salute for their service to our country. Selected soldiers will receive tickets to the game as well as a live welcome on the Garden HDX. For information, visit bostonbruins.com. I believe those were some Marines there up in the top row. Kolyikov, Krejci takes it down knee high along the boards. Through to Boychuk, the rocket, and a save by Thomas aggressively off his line. Boychuk tries to flatten the puck, wrists it hard for Lucci, catches it on the forehand. Now Krug with speed goes right around Kolyikov. Good pick set up by Aginla. Boychuk with the bomb again, and Fleischman blocks that. Krug up the wall, Aginla twists it past Kolyikov. Lucic stumbling over Fleischman's stick. Krug has enough gas left in the tank to win the race against Barkov. Over to Boyd shut. Tries to go north and south. Fans on it, then angles it across. Krejci through the legs to Krug. He's got Lucic left. Lucic holds back for Krug, but it's too far forward. Gilbert sweeps it out. That'll go the length of the ice for icing against the Panthers. Now you like that pass by Krug to be a little sharper. The Bruins had something going with that between the legs pass by David Krejci to Krug jumping into the play. And now you have something coming across the offensive blue line. But Krug's backhand pass slows Lucic to a stop because it's in his feet. And now Lucic really has very limited options. He tries to make a play, make something out of nothing. But there was something there to be had initially. Stalemate off the faceoff. Marshawn wins it with Kelly down to the corner. Kelly tries to chip the puck past Upshaw. Upshaw knocks it down with the body. Here's Marcel Gotch. He's got boys going wide. Gotch flips it end over end to the corner. Boys is just going off for a line shot. Kelly turns and fires. And that'll be icing against the Bruins. Rick, the puck's not sitting flat again. We've seen this uh, several times. Uh, it happened a lot in Columbus a few days ago. And... Uh, do you want to make a simpler play when the puck's tumbling a lot? Yeah, you need to, and uh, you got to shorten up the passing routes as best you can. You can't get everybody in the same area of the ice, you know, like a seven-year-old soccer game. But, you know, you, you, you got to shorten up the passing routes and try to make the highest percentage of plays you can. Socks up 2-0 now. David oh, Ross oh. with an RBI double and a reminder after ALCS game five. Full coverage on Nesson. Live. Bruins with some significant territorial domination in the first period. Rask makes a save, and the Bruins try to turn it into transition. Jordan Caron bouncing it wide of Tim Thomas. 45% of the first period was spent in the Florida zone, according to the zone time that Nesson tracks. It's where the puck is, regardless of the subjective measurement of possession. 9.37 to go, second period. Tim Thomas has seen 20 shots on goal already in this game. Nostalgic version of hard hits brought to you by Timberland Pro 2011. Oh, Hendrick, have a seat. Tim Thomas defending his old turf. Now it's Alex Burroughs' turn. You remember Billy Smith? Ah, yeah. Oh, you want to go? Why, yeah, yada. And Seidenberg flattens Burroughs. Ah, the good old days. Tim Thomas. Tonight, wearing a Florida Panthers sweater. Here's Riley Smith walking in with the pass behind Erickson. Gotch wants transition, but the Bruins have good numbers back as Bergeron, who else, was back in the scene. How does Bergeron do that? The Bruins were going full speed, and it blew up and turned on a dime, but Bergeron was the first guy to get back among the forwards. Well, he stops on the puck, number one. No flybys, no big circles. Stop on a puck and take the perfect angle back into the play. Chara catches the puck on his forehand to Erickson, the triangle to Smith. He makes a simple play, chips down the wall. 
and has to hop around the Weaver contact. Weaver sweeps the puck back up to center, and Tory Krug's on his horse to go back and retrieve. Florida in the middle of a change. Krug misses the pass for Thornton. The Grant all the way up ice, and Campbell unloads on him. Pye banks it to Boychuk, who took Fleischman out of the game. Krug, Thornton, the deflection, and a save by Thomas. Fleischman left after absorbing a Boychuk blast earlier this period. Thornton, the quick release from the dot, and it goes off corner glass. Krug waiting for the tripling puck, and it tumbles on him. He risks it around the Bruins. We'll have to tag up. Thornton didn't know it came outside. Oh, he knew, oh. according to the linesman. They're going to make this wow. an deliberate. automatic. Yeah, deliberate. Bruins Rewind coming up in just 30 seconds. Stay with us. Time now for the Berkshire Bank exciting rewind. We're going to go back to the Danny Paye goal with Campbell taking the draw in the Bruin end. Bruins do a lot of the little things well, end up with possession. Seidenberg's going to take ice. Paye in behind to Branson and a beautiful finish to chip it up high, short side over Tim Thomas. But here are the things to look for. Number one, Gregory Campbell's going to take the draw. Left hand, he's going to turn it over, which tells everybody, I'm just going to try to win this draw with strength on the backhand. So Barkowski knows this puck's going in his general area. Some one-on-ones occur, and a great pass by Barkowski to get the puck to Seidenberg. But when this play comes to the neutral zone, good Branson, the right defenseman, as he's trying to put himself on the dot in the middle of the ice, his stick is in the air. If he keeps that stick along the ice, in position to the outside, Seidenberg may not even try to make that pass to Danny Pae. Pae is going to have to stop at the blue line, and all of a sudden now it becomes a two-on-two. -two. But Gabranson keeps that stick in the air, and then Pae does a terrific job, Jack, protecting that puck coming across the blue line. Again, right shoulder leaning in, put the puck in an area that Gabranson can't get at it, extend that right leg, protect the puck, keep up your level of speed, and attack the net. Some real good things happening on the Pae goal. Gabranson now in his third season was the number three overall pick in 2010 by Florida. Big body, 6'4", 195 pounds. Pretty smart kid. He was the uh, OHL Scholastic Player of the Year when he was 18 years old. But has not blossomed the way they had hoped he would. Last couple of seasons, his plus-minus has been minus 22 and minus 19. Bruins are going to be short-handed here for a hooking penalty. Mm -hmm. Thomas late to recognize, but now makes the sprint. Yeah, it looked like a slash by David Krejci, and uh, Huberdo gave that little handshake to get the referee's attention. Well, he got it. <laughs> Versteeg scores! High glove side. Chris Versteeg does what he does best. And Florida is hanging around. Well, on a delayed call, it was going to be a penalty on David Krejci. Thomas gets to the Florida bench. They get the extra attacker, and they maintain possession in the Bruins' defensive zone. Right point, a little hesitation, stutter step move. That's a nice play, and then be able to keep that puck down deep. I believe it was Gilbert that made the play. That's a real nice one-handed pass. Nice touch pass, Huberto for Stieg in the seam, and Kopetsky gets to the front of the net to ball the Rask just enough. And allow that puck to beat Tuka. Short side high over the glove. Well, now a surge of energy for the Florida Panthers, who have not had the puck in front of Tuka Rask a whole lot. But the Bruins, a few shaky plays. And some opportunistic scoring from Florida. Perron barrels down the right wing, pulls up against Scotty Upshaw, he chops it loose. Dots takes a whack at the puck, it's in Boychuk's skates. Kelly rotating, but can't keep the bouncer in the attacking zone. Ah, here's a breakup ice for Jesse Winchester, he's got Upshaw in the middle. Crew one-hands him and keeps him on the end board. The puck loose, Boychuk ties up Upshaw. Kelly tries to rake it out of the skates of a few players down there. Winchester digs it loose, but Crew has it unopposed. Indirect pass intended for Jordan Caron. And this is going to go for icing against Boston. Huberto and Gilbert get the assists on Versteeg's second goal of the season at 12:32. 32 That's a really good play by Gilbert against David Krejci out at the blue line just to keep the play alive. And Huberto shows his offensive uh, skills with that little touch pass to Versteeg opening that seam. Nice play by uh, some talented offensive forwards. 
but give Gilbert credit for keeping the play alive out at the point. Jugstad can't keep possession. Marshawn dribbles the puck down into Kulikov's corner. The Bruins get a full change. It's Chara and Hamilton, the defensive pair. The Bruins are online with Erickson and Smith out there. Mathias gets to the puck. Bergeron can't control it. Versteeg slides it into the crease and Rask snuffs it out. Now here's a pumped up Florida team. They're starting to get some chances here. Well, the Bruins are in good shape. Once again, Bergeron right where he should be, but he loses an edge. Now it becomes a dangerous play. You have tough ice conditions, not just the puck bouncing a little bit. Sometimes you have a little tough time keeping your balance. Kevin Deneen sending out the line of Barkoff. Fleischman and boys. Fleischman back after having had to go down the tunnel for some repairs or at least a little bit of recuperation. Blocking the Johnny Boychuk shot. It rattles around off Weaver out to center. Char, the diagonal for Riley Smith, but he can't keep it on the backhand. It's the rookie Alexander Barkoff with a quick turn through Bergeron. Chara bangs boys, and then Weaver unloads on Smith here. It's Erickson with Hamilton jumping up. Juicy rebound out of the glove of Thomas. Back to Erickson and Bergeron. Now Smith wiggling past the dot. It rattles around off Weaver and boys. Weaver settles it in the corner, wrists it up the boards, and here comes Barkoff. Pulls back against the flow and then goes ahead to boys. Hamilton checks in. Erickson tries to angle off Barkoff. Barkoff in the corner, centers it. Coberto is great in traffic, stick handling, has really good vision. Gilbert knocks down the bouncing puck. Hamilton gloves it and then sizzles the pass beyond Bergeron. It'll be icing against Boston. We talked earlier about that self-doubt or team doubt if you're the Florida Panthers given the way they've started this year. The Bruins had that 2-0 lead in the first period. But it's amazing how that, that pendulum of belief swings when you're a young team trying to find your way. The prestige goal has really given Florida some believability. Buck bounces up and hits lineman Shane and higher. Hoberto off of Bergeron. Gomez rattles the puck loose and bounces off Gilbert's legs. Smith to Bergeron, the shot saved. Thomas, juicy rebound. A lot of long rebounds coming off Thomas. Clearly is not in top form. Still has the athleticism, but not quite as sharp as we've seen him at the top of his game. But then again, what would you expect? He is, after all, playing just his fourth game in a year and a half. Yeah, not even his, not even a complete game, really, with the injury. So really more like his third game, I guess. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, rebound control will be one of the things. It's, uh, it's like your short game in golf. It's one of the things that if you've been off for a while, it's the last thing to come back. So how's yours? Oh, I've been playing a lot. <laughs> Deadly. Gomez and Krejci on the faceoff. Krejci wins it cleanly for Lucic. The shot, Thomas, way outside the crease. Seidenberg holds, tries to drive it through Huberto. Seidenberg up the wall. Gilbert back in the goal, and Lucic with the angle and the effort, and the puck's underneath Lucic. Kopetsky winds it out of his own zone, tries to self-pass. Barkowski plays the body and one hands it to Seidenberg. By the way, that thing that broke on Lucic, the equipment, that was the Achilles protector at the top of his skate. And so Keith Robinson used the skate riveter, what they rivet the blade to the boot with. Oh! and invented a little splint for it because this early in the season Lucic doesn't have a second pair of skates and last season's leftover pair was trapped. Here's Upshaw on the off wing the shot wide the stick side of Rask he lost his stick in combination. And we get a stoppage 335 to go in the second period. The Bruins clinging to a 2-1 lead against a rejuvenated Florida team. Panthers right winger Chris Versteeg was a 2004 fifth round draft pick for the Boston Bruins. Earlier that same draft year, David Krejci was selected. Versteeg was extremely complimentary of the 2006-2007 season the two forwards spent playing for the Providence Bruins as Krejci helped develop Versteeg's game. Just to know that I can play with top end skill guys, you know, I, I had a bit of a rough road there in junior and then I come into uh, Providence and he uh, 
you know, playing with Craig and the, the way me and him found chemistry together and played together and the points we put up together and, uh, you know, it, it really helped myself realize that, yeah, you know, I can play this game and I can play at a top level with the top guys. And Steve went to the Blackhawks from the Bruins for Brandon Bochensky. And was part of that Stanley Cup team for Chicago in 2010 before he got traded to Toronto from Victor Stahlberg. There's Pye racing over the line, pulls up. He's got Gregory Campbell, the shot saved by Thomas. And he hangs on, and Campbell goes hard to the end boards. Uh, once again, Danny Pye using his speed, this time in the neutral zone, to take this puck wide, gain the blue line. And this is a veteran move. Don't just take that puck into an area where you're going to really limit yourself. Pull up, get that puck on your forehand. Now you have some options. Worst case scenario, you throw the puck at the net on a forehand position. But now he's got Gregory Campbell on a good net drive up the near post. And Campbell gets a pretty good opportunity. Kelly ties up Gomez so Marshawn can win the puck. Kalukov in the corner rifles it up the boards. Bouncer Hamilton shot tipped in front as Caron went to goal. Gomez stick handles through traffic but taps it right to Hamilton. Hamilton risks it for Caron. Low circle. Kalukov gets body position. Marshawn slides it back to Hamilton to the middle of the line. Chips it back for Marshawn, goes across the zone to Char, a huge reach, and he flaps it to the end glass. Now it's Marshawn. Kulikov digs the puck loose. Kulikov, another couple of whacks at it, and here's Huberto, who's got those sweet hands. Weaver winds around Kelly and gets him off his skates, pucks the puck to the end board. Versteeg goes through and kicks it away from Hamilton. Caron's in good position, and he'll skate it out to center. The Bruins are looking for a change here, but Caron throws it into the Boston bench and nearly beheads Chad Johnson. Yeah, you got to pay attention down there if you're the backup goaltender. You're just wearing a ball cap. That could be a dangerous spot. A lot of goaltenders will wear their gloves when they're sitting on that bench. Yep. Others go barehanded, but uh, you better be tracking the play. If just joining us through the top of the hour, lots going on in the Boston sports scene tonight. The Bruins leading the Florida Panthers 2 1 second period, playing against Tim Thomas. Alongside Andy Brickley, with Jamie Earl at ice level on Jack Edwards. Here's Matt Barkowski's drive into the legs of Nick Gugstad. And with possession and Sean Mathias on the ice, Boston's going to be short handed. Claude Julian got an early goal from Daniel Pai, a power play goal from Dougie Hamilton in the mid-first. Christopher Stieg scored in a six skating against five situation with a delayed call coming against Boston, and now the power play coming. Yeah, stick work from behind. Riley Smith, the Bruins with the four-checking pressure on. A shot block on the attempt by Parkowski leads to a change in possession. And now Smith will be in the box. Minute and a half or so to go here in the period. Bruins need a big penalty kill. Kulikov's wrist shot, a blocker saved by Rask. Kinla goes to the corner with Barkov. Boys and Shara. Barkov finds the puck. Rolls the pass Fleischman to Kulikov quickly to the middle of the line. Fleischman closes the wrist shot off of Chara's leg and over the top. Brian Campbell around the rim. It hops past Fleischman. Now it's a race. Kelly whacking the puck to the corner. Kulikov after him. Kelly wins it to a Ginla. The shot. Brian Campbell gets spun around in the collision with a Ginla. Oh, what a great effort by Chris Kelly and a heads up play to avoid contact, make the steal, and deliver a pass. In the final minute of the second period, you can see how much the puck is bouncing around. Nearly cost Florida a shorthanded goal scored against. Yeah, and with Bergeron fell defensively in a good positional play a couple of shifts ago, Kelly fell in the same spot. Good Branson brings it into the attacking zone. Gomez passes to nobody, and people in Montreal are saying, see, see, I told you so. <laughs> Gomez still profiting from the buyout that the Canadiens executed. Now in the final 30 seconds of the second period, Gomez in the corner. Barkowski on the hit. Gilroy's wrist shot wild and wide. Now it's good. Branson shifts the backhand to the corner. Seidenberg finds Gregory Campbell. He'll scoop it the length of the ice. And that'll just about kill off the second period. The Bruins will enter the third, killing a penalty. And up 2-1 against the Florida team that has lost five of six. A reminder.
full Red Sox post game coming your way live on Nesson immediately at the end of ALCS game five. Dale and Billy are in the studio, guys. The Geico Road Ahead. The Bruins are on the front half of a Florida trip. We'll be with you from Tampa on Saturday night. Pre-game 6.30, game time 7 p.m. on Nesson. And then next Wednesday, the Buffalo Network has the Buffalo game. But we'll be back with you on Thursday at 7 p.m. as the Bruins begin two games in three nights at TD Garden against the Sharks and then the New Jersey Devils. Alongside Andy Brickley with Jamie Erdahl at ice level and with our Nesson production crew, I'm Jack Edwards. The Florida Panthers with some choppy ice conditions have fought their way back into this game and they're gonna have a power play to begin the third period. Moments ago, Brick spoke with Bruins assistant, Doug Jarvis. Doug, you came into tonight's action as a team, uh, as one of the best teams in the league in generating shots on goal, but it doesn't seem that the Bruins have found the rhythm of their offense. What do you think that is? Well, I, I think we're having a tough, tougher time with our breakouts tonight, and usually when you break out clean, uh, then you seem to move up the ice in a coordinated fashion and end up with an offensive play. We, we haven't had that same uh, rhythm uh, uh, from deep in our end tonight. You got all three young defensemen, if I can call them that, in the lineup tonight. What goes into that decision? Well, I think it's gathering uh, experience. It's keeping people playing. Uh, uh, and again, I think the big thing is just uh, getting experience uh, in the NHL. It's uh, uh, you, you got to play to to get that experience, and uh, that's what they're doing for us. It seems like certainly from up here that uh, the puck's bouncing a lot. You see some players uh, losing the edge. Maybe the ice isn't that good. What adjustments as a player do you have to make when you're playing with such conditions? Well, you ha you really have to make sure that uh, when you have the puck that you manage it well and if you're making plays and you got to really lean into things and uh, probably even through that neutral zone trying to instead of getting overly creative uh, make sure the pocket is, is advancing uh, into their end and then you can get in there and uh, go to work with your forecheck well you got to win tonight if you want to sweep the Florida trip so good luck in the third period thanks Andy well Julian's Bruins have not allowed a third period goal other than Matt Duchesne's empty netter Patrice Bergeron taking the face off against Alexander Barkov to begin the third. Game summary brought to you by your New England Ford dealers. Here's Louis Erickson picks off the pass from Gilbert. Tries to move to the inside, but Gilbert blocks it with his skates. Brian Campbell swings the puck around. Brad Boys goes wing to wing to Thomas Fleischman. He wrists it around the boards. Zero shots on goal during the power play for Florida as Riley Smith comes out of the penalty bench. So Brick, as Doug Jarvis was telling you, make sure. And in a one-goal game, where the puck is right now in the defensive zone, make doubly sure. Sukaras turns the stick to knock it to the corner. Yeah, simple plays. Keep it puck moving forward. He emphasized center ice. Minimize turnovers in that area. Try to establish a forecheck. Florida has shown that if you forecheck them, they will make mistakes, and that's where the Bruins must spend most of this third period. Bergeron takes the bouncing puck, knocks it ahead to McGinley. He sticks with it to win the battle against Kopetsky. Now Krejci swoops down to the hash mark, hits the brakes, chips it back to Barkowski. A quick move around Kopetsky. Krejci slides the puck down to McGinley, goes to the backhand. Kulikov backs it away. McGinley goes down hard after the check. Barkowski wiggles it to Krejci. Krejci through the seam, draws three checkers to the blue line. Barkowski zooms down the wing, fires it on Thomas, gets the rebound that he was looking for. Kopetsky takes the feed from Kulikov, but the Bruins get it back in the neutral zone. Now Kopetsky comes out of the pile with the puck. The long shot, Rask kicks it all the way out to the blue line. Had to think that was intentional as he saw Gidla out there alone. Oberto sings the pass to the defenseman, Gilroy. Gilroy moves against Seidenberg, who takes him to the corner. Kelly battling against Gomez. The puck deflects Gomez right in front. Gilroy, shot saved by Raskets underneath. Christine digs, and the Panthers cannot push it across the line with Rask down. Gomez tries to trickle it in front of Versteen. Rask holds the short side. Here's Gomez on the end boards. Kelly takes it away. Huberto. Finds the seam. Good Branson kicks to the stick. Nudges it ahead for Steve. Gets pummeled on Barkowski's hit. It knocked him off balance and the puck comes free. Lucci trickles it out to center. Once again, Florida, when they activate their D, they give Bruins problems in coverage. That time it was Gilroy. 
jumping into the play as if he was playing wing, and he ended up in the slot with the best chance. Here's Caron closing the shot, goes off the leg of Weaver, trickles toward the front. Weaver skates to the corner. Caron finishes his check, but Branson brings it near side to Fleischman. Fleischman stick handles to the oh, red line. Boychuk goes back to his corner. Fleischman riding him. Pae to Krug off the boards to Gregory Campbell. Campbell makes the safe play cross ice. Krug sweeps it into the zone. Fugikov with a quick turn and now the S turn back of the goal. Thomas gives it away to Pae. Fires it off the apron. Thomas pokes it clear. It bounces off of Boyce's stick. Matthias can't skate it out of the zone. Erickson to Pae. Gives it low to Gregory Campbell. Back to Pae. Bouncing puck. Pae reaches around Boyce. Hamilton whips the puck cross ice. Chara down to the top of the circle. Tries to gun it into the slot. Boyce takes it away there. He's got Matthias skating out on the right wing. Boyce to the center dot and flicks it in deep for a chance. Oh, good effort by Danny Pae. Kind of a mixed bag for a line. Bruins in the middle of a line change. But Pae with good speed, good footwork, keeping plays alive. Got it back to Hamilton. Hamilton had five shots through two periods, by the way, Jack. Along with a goal on the power play. And there's the opportunity because of the four check by Campbell and the speed of Pae causing all kinds of problems. Conversely, at the opposite end, Raz got to make a stop from close range. Gilroy, the defenseman, about 12 feet in front of the net. Bruins have had the puck in Florida's end for more than three minutes more than Florida has had the puck in Boston's end of the ice tonight, but it's just a one-goal game. Matthias turns and fires, saved by Rask. He tries to fungle it out of there, but can't make contact. That's Winchester. Jugstad, a big body, brings it back to Gilbert, slides it along the line. Brian Campbell intentionally wide. Rask keeps it back there, but here's Matthias. He comes forward to the goal line. Now Matthias out to the hash marks. Bergeron breaks him down and spins the pass ahead to Erickson. Chips safely off glass through center. Yeah, real good leverage and coverage by Bergeron against a bigger guy. And Matthias, Matthias had a chance prior to that. A good wrist shot from the dot on the off wing with a little bit of traffic. But Rask got to get with the left shoulder. Let's go Bruins the chant in Sunrise, Florida. Stop by the Bruins equipment sale at Monkey Sports Superstore in Norwood this Saturday at 8 a.m. for your chance to purchase player one practice and game equipment. Sale items include skates, helmets, gloves, sticks, and will be available while supplies last. To learn more, visit bostonbruins.com. Top of the fourth, the Sox lead Detroit in game five of the ALCS 4-0. A reminder that... Essence live post-game coverage starts up immediately following the end of game five. So tune in to Nesson for that. Chris for Steve behind Scott Gomez. The puck to Charles Porter. Knocks the backhand pass. Hamilton Gilroy pinches in against Thornton and reverses it. Charles with Steve closing. Charles ships ahead to Pae. Comes right back to the captain. Char nudges the puck to Hamilton. He's there in close support. Off the corner glass. Pae absorbs the good Branson hit. I nudges the puck down the pit plate to Gregory Campbell. Can't do much with it. Good Branson's wrist shot. Glove saved by Rask. Well, Florida trying to stay in this hockey game. They're only down by one. They're feeling it. Even if they give up opportunities at one end, uh, they can create some offense in the Bruins' end with good rotation and mobile defense. And... Uh, you know, no, no rhyme or rhythms really to what they're doing in the offensive zone. It's just, just create. Well, that's what it is on a bad ice surface. There are a lot of random moments in this game. But the ice is the same for both teams. Marcel Gosh and Milan Lucic on the faceoff. Lucic wins it to the corner, but Florida gets the puck right back. Lucic just muscles Huberto off the puck. Kulikov holds back in his own zone. Weaver with Kopetsky circling in front of him. Now Kulikov, a really good skater. Weaver's pass does not connect, and it's icing against Florida. Don't miss Saturday's all-new Big Bad Bruins Live, presented by DCU, Digital Federal Credit Union. We put the Big Bad spotlight on number four, Bobby Orr. When Dale sits down with a legend, discusses his new book, and looks back at his career in the black and gold. Catch all that and more this Saturday at 6.
He's Andy Brickley, I'm Jack Edwards, Jamie Erdahl's at ice level, our Nesson production crew along with us in Sunrise, Florida, where the Panthers have been pretty much outplayed in this game, but hanging in there, Johnny Boychuk's drive against Tim Thomas. The Bruins scored two goals in the first period. Florida scrapped and got the benefit of some pretty good bounces that have baffled both teams. And now the Bruins are in a real dogfight with 14 minutes to go. Lucic backing into the neutral zone, but he leaves the puck behind. Thomas Fleischman, the blocker saved by Rash. Thomas has had some of his trademark moves. The poke check, jumping off the line, has not been at his sharpest, but he's been better as the game has moved along. Iginla with Lucic in the corner. Iginla comes up to the half boards, tries a toe drag. Iginla swats at it, backhanded. Now Lucic spins it middle. Iginla finds the garbage, works his way through the thicket, and a penalty coming here against Florida. 13.36 to go in the game. The Bruins will be on the power play when it resumes. Strong puck possession by the Krejci line. Lucic along the wall. Again, in one-on-one -on -one battles. They protect it well. And David Krejci away from the puck, trying to get to the front of the net. Stick comes up from Kulikov. And he'll go to the box, not for two minutes, but for four, Jack. And David Krejci now has drawn three penalties against the Florida Panthers in this game. Huge opportunity to extend the lead, which the Bruins have done on their power play already once in this game. Taking their 1-0 lead to 2-0 in the first period. Johnny Boychuk and Dougie Hamilton, the point man. Mike Weaver winning the race against Gregory Campbell, and he risks the puck on edge all the way down the ice. Hamilton has Louis Erickson breaking on the left side. Bergeron ahead of him to the right. Campbell already ahead of the play. Ryan Campbell on it. Around through both corners. Boychuk wins the battle against Kopetsky. Now it's Bergeron hard to Gregory Campbell. Back to Boychuk. Moves to the middle. Hamilton's drive blocked down by Gilbert. Hamilton gets it back. Hamilton holds against Kopetsky. Bergeron out high to Boychuk. His blast goes off. Gotcha's stick. And up out of play with 105 left in the first half of the double minor against Kulikov. Uh, Boychuk just had to settle that hard pass from Bergeron down, and just because of that little delay, that shot's going to get deflected. The first opportunity, they set up Hamilton for the one-timer. Good shot blocked by the Panther penalty killer. Body position, stick position, structure defensively. Early penalty kill by Florida, critical time. Effective, but the Bruins have plenty of time with this double minor to go. Weaver makes a quick clear. Aginla unable to get to the boards before the puck got past the blue line. Twelve and a half to go in the game. Bruins on an extended power play here. Lucic to Aginla comes right through and a save by Thomas stacking the pad. Sliding past the post in classic Tim Thomas fashion denying Jerome Aginla. Oh, what a great breakout by the Boston power play. Crew to Lucic to Aginla and all of a sudden he's alone. Chara to Lucic over the middle of the line. Krejci back to Krug, the quick release. Glove saved by Thomas. Oh, the days of yore. <laughs> well, Krug starts it. Give it to the man with speed. That's Lucic right up the middle of the ice. He's got options. All of a sudden, Ginla has Gabranson going the wrong direction. Weaver with the reach in. Disrupted to Ginla just a little bit on that forehand backhand move. Try to tuck it back before that right pad could get down on the ice. Maybe sneak it through the five hole. Tom Gilbert all the way down. Rask gets the paddle down right across the gaping goal mouth. Dougie Hamilton holds. Ten seconds left in the first half of the double minor to Kulikov. Brian Campbell in front of his own goal. Winchester off the boards down the length of the ice. Two shots on goal for the Bruins in the first half of that minor penalty, which is killed. Dougie Hamilton, hard to the corner, bounces out towards Scotty Upshaw of Florida. Bergeron flies it loose. Upshaw clears. Hamilton to Boychuk. Ahead for Campbell. Redirects the puck to the end door. Ryan Campbell gives it to Upshaw. 
Gilbert. Gregory Campbell in a battle. Boychuk pinches. Gregory Campbell swings the puck to Aginla. The Bruins changing out personnel. Aginla going one against three, and Brian Campbell picks his pocket. Nope. Don't, don't kill the penalty for them. Boston having a difficult time when they're firing the puck in, getting it back in retrieval, spending too much time in the neutral zone. They're effective with the man advantage if they can get in their set in the offensive zone. Krejci tries to race away from Kopetsky, feeds Lucic on the fly against Weaver. He cuts to the post. It's off to Branson, loose in the slot, and Kopetsky guns it off the boards and out. Now Krug races out of the Boston zone, gains speed over the cat at the center line, cuts it off at the blue line. Krejci drives the puck in deep. Weaver tries to chop it past Charo, who wins the puck away. Krejci waiting unopposed on the half board. Slides it to Krug. Krug to Aginla to drive. Weaver on the block. Aginla holds the puck against Upshaw, saucers it to Krug. The rich shot, Charo on the tip. Thomas gets the quick whistle, even though the puck clearly was loose. 28 seconds to go on Kulikov's second of the double minor. Well, again, they're looking for the one-timer, and uh, they set him up for it. That was blocked. And then they quickly get it back to Krug, who wants to use that quick little wrist shot because he knows Char is working the front of the net. Char tries to get a piece. And you're right, Jack, that was a quick whistle, benefiting Tim Thomas and the Panthers. But still enough time, 28 seconds on the main advantage to extend your lead. First run, Erickson, Smith, Seidenberg, and Barkowski on the ice. Here's Barkowski with a gap. He closes, centering pass. Brian Campbell knocks it loose. Here's Mathias who can fly. Seidenberg has the angle, taps the puck loose on the board. Mathias wheels at the hash marks, tries to come off the half wall. Mathias one against five, double deflection off Barkowski, and then Rask makes the positional stop. Sean Mathias taking on the entire Bruins team on the ice and almost getting a goal out of it. Now here comes Huberto, curl and drag, but he's one against three. Markowski and Bergeron knocking him off the puck with Seidenberg holding the fort. Here's Gilroy, the defenseman, on another volley forward. Here's Seidenberg off the board for Smith with Erickson middle. Smith looking for Erickson. Weaver belts the puck away. Now it's Gilroy. All over the ice in this shift. Matt Gilroy sends the puck deep. Rask, Boychuk, bounces it around to Caron. Caron up to the red line. Just wants to get it in deep. Second time Riley Smith's been a two-on-one here tonight. Trying to make passes in both instances. Don't be afraid to shoot that puck. Reed is good. Brad Marshawn, a little water bug move out of the corner. Boychuk reaches above the shoulder to make contact with the puck. And that'll draw a face-off in the neutral zone. Tuka Rask denying the deflection as Sean Mathias goes one against five. Dale, Billy, thank you very much. And, of course, after they're wrapped up, as soon as ALCS Game 5 finishes up, tune over to Nesson immediately following the conclusion of that game. Scotty Upshaw with a drive from the left wing, and Florida's hanging around. The Panthers have earned it. They got a big surge of energy after their goal, and they've been a problem ever since. I get concerned when I see Upshaw shoot. He's got good numbers against the Bruins. Nine goals in 13 games, I think, lifetime. Yeah, when he can stay healthy, he can really play. Upshaw, another one of those guys who started for Barry Trotz in Nashville, and then where did he go? Philadelphia in the Forsberg trade. Then to Phoenix for Dan Carcillo. Columbus and then signed as a free agent for Florida. Lucic point blank and a diving effort. Thomas Kopetsky getting the stick in the path of Lucic's shot. Now Kopetsky stays on side. Huberto tumbles toward the slot. The crowd looking for a call, not going to get it. Kopetsky on a bouncing puck, and Aginla staples it to the end board. Krejci swings the puck wing to wing. Aginla bunts it ahead. It's on edge constantly. The puck hardly ever flat past the midpoint of the period tonight. Lucic tries himself out. A-frames gets a little bit of space. Now Barkowski's wrist shot saved by Thomas at the top of his crease. Aginla in the corner. Brian Campbell knocks at the blue line. Zyper keeps it on the paint and sends it in deep. Now it's Todd Gilbert. Lucic bangs him and the glass sways. 
Campbell chips off glass back to center, and Florida's back to the pattern it was in for much of the first and second periods, not making plays out of its own end. Matt Gilroy back to retrieve. Louis Erickson spins off, loses an edge. Bergeron right in front, but Versteeg is there to Upshaw. Back to Versteeg on the off wing. Smith in pursuit from behind. Good branch in the defenseman all the way to the end boards. Versteeg rattles it right across the goal line and out. Bartkowski takes the hit to move the puck to Smith. Smith to Erickson, taps it along to Bergeron, three on two. Bergeron the curl and drag off Gilroy's stick up and out of play. A uh, pretty good four check. It starts with David Krejci, body on body, support from McGinla, create the turnover. Third man high right in the slot. He can be the goal scorer. Milan Lucic has a great opportunity, but Popetsky with the dive back, able to disrupt that chance. And then Lucic on the back check. The crowd wanted a penalty. Huberto trying to make a move, and Lucic just so powerful. Even with a free hand, just a little shove. Huberto went flying. Maybe lost an edge, too, on the play, but uh, a good non-call. Bergeron wins the face off the point, check the wrist shot into the pile of bodies. Bergeron finds it, sends it right past the post. Weissman keeps Boychuk off the puck. Here comes the rookie Barkov. The shot goes over the top and ramped up off of crude sticks and then went flying over the crossbar. Boychuk nudges the puck to Bergeron across the Bruins zone. Krug turns away from Barkov and leverages him down into the corner. Bergeron picks the puck out of their skates, comes to the board, gets it to Erickson, an example of making a simple serve play in bad conditions. And here's a tumble off the stick of Weaver. Weitzman to cross ice. Chara turns to face the play, indirect to Kelly. The pass does not connect with Perron, and that's icing. About a second before Good Branson got to the dots, the whistle blows. Saturday night at 6.30, catch up with Dale, Billy, and Gord when W.B. Mason presents Bruins Face Off Live. They'll preview what the Bruins need to do against Tampa. And they'll have all the latest news in the NHL hat trick. Check it all out Saturday at 6.30. News from around the NHL coming up with Dale and Billy after the game. We get uh, word. There's a loose puck and they score! Looked as if the play was dead. Bruins couldn't locate it. It tumbles loose. And Jesse Winchester scores his first goal since December of 2011. It's tied with six minutes to go. Now, this is just ugly. Sloppy goal. The Bruins going to give it up right off a of faceoff in their own zone. Chara couldn't handle the puck in by his skates a little bit. When he can't make that little chip, it was Jesse Winchester that kept it alive. Rass tried to pop a glove on top of it, but it squirts down that left pad before he can squeeze it off. Not once, but twice. The work by Winchester, just gutting it out, taking a swing at it, and picks it out of midair on the second attempt to tie the hockey game. And that, in a few seconds, is the story of this game. How Florida has battled and stayed in it ugly. And now Tim Thomas has a chance for points against the Boston Bruins. After being up 2-0, the Bruins have surrendered the lead. Dougie Hamilton passed the hash mark, throws it right through the slot, and caroms off the boards. Here comes Huberto to Kopetsky across the center out. Tangles into the Boston zone, wrists it wide on the stick side of Rash. Hamilton tries to chip it ahead. Chris Kelly going after it. Doc stick handling through traffic. Julio shovels it back. Gilbert to Brian Campbell. Whiffs on the pass attempt. Paye carefully out to the red line. Wrists it ahead right to Gilbert of Florida, though. It's the first non empty netter that the Bruins have allowed in the third period all season long. This being game number six. David Krejci with a hop in his stride. Runs into the body check of Scott Gomez. Now Kovic off to Gomez. Over the line of Versteeg middle. The shot up on the chest of Tuka Rask. Florida's feeling it. 4.35 to go. And the Panthers have clawed their way back into a tie. The Nesson.com game report. For more sports news, visit Nesson.com.
Daniel Pye got the Bruins off to a pretty good start in the first four minutes, beating Tim Thomas, stick side high. Dougie Hamilton on the power play to make it 2-0. But then, cat scratch fever. Clawing and scraping their way back into the game. Florida has come all the way back. It has trailed for 50 minutes and 15 seconds of this game, but it is tied now with four and a half to go. Bergeron chips it around through the corner. Scotty Upshaw tries to drag the puck up. The board goes the other way. Now for Steve Seidenberg keeps his position, keeps the legs spread wide, and Boychuk takes the puck. His pass offline. Weaver knocks it right to Krejci. Krejci takes it out of the air. Stick handles into the attacking zone. Goes around Kulikov to the corner. Throws it chest high through the crease. Lucic low for Krejci. Indirect for Seidenberg, Cox and fires, and Thomas makes the save. Now, a real creative pass by David Krejci when he gets it behind the net. Most teams would just all gather in the slot area to try to protect in front of Tim Thomas. In this case, David Krejci goes indirect off the boards to a wide open left point for a good hard drive. Lucic could knock down in front of the net, trying to get to the front of the net, but Seidenberg right on target. It was nice of you to work Ted Nugent into the broadcast, by the way. <laughs> Doing whatever I can to help record sales. Pye <laughs> and Gilbert joust in the corner. Barkoff cuts off Gregory Campbell. Sean Thornton there is the next layer. Gregory Campbell mucking and fighting. And Thornton throws the puck to the corner again. Gregory Campbell and Pye dig a loose. Ryan Campbell's there. Off the boards for Gilbert. Florida hemmed in below the dots in the defensive zone. Chara gets a stick on the clear by boys. Hamilton takes possession right back with three and a half to go. Barkoff, short pass, Gregory Campbell shot, saved by Thomas. And it stays 2-2 with 3.23 left on the center ice scoreboard. The dogged shift by this fourth line, the Bruins. This is their trademark, real good pressure. And even though uh, Florida finally gets it into the neutral zone, it's a quick counterattack. And a good force with stick position by Gregory Campbell. Improves his angle, gets Thomas moving. Tries to go back against the green glove side, but uh, Thomas well positioned. The quick shot, Riley Smith jumping into the faceoff circle. Bergeron and Hubert will lock up in the corner. Weaver takes it away. Erickson cuts off his first desired pass. Kopetsky throws the shoulder hard into Boychuk to get the puck to center. Kopetsky snaps it toward Rask. He gloves it, takes it down, and he'll take the face off at the Bruins' end of the ice. And when you take a little poke at a Bruins goaltender, Thomas Kopetsky can expect a whole bunch of company in a hurry. Well, it's a good reaction by Boychuk, but it's a good play by Kopetsky. Rask just dangled that puck out there thinking maybe I can make a play and I'll make a decision as Kopetsky gets close to when he took the face off. Uh, Kopetsky's just trying to hunt that puck down. It's not a bad play, but it's not a bad reaction by Boston either. I mean, that puck's still alive. No harm, no foul. Little conversation. But I want to go back to that four-minute power play, Jack. You know, in a game where one little bounce, and we've seen a ton of bounces today, you know, we talked a little bit about ice conditions and uh, guys losing an edge, pucks bouncing all over. Anything can happen. Turnovers have been a plenty in both directions. And when you go back to that tying goal by Jesse Winchester, I mean, that puck just, you, know, you couldn't gather it. If Boston could have done something with that four-minute power play, now you extend your lead to two again. Bruins with power plays and up by one this season are just one for four. Chris Kelly forward to the goal line, sends it to the circle. Winchester off Barkowski's legs. Matthias has Bjorkstad going middle. Matthias fights toward the middle. Shot saved by Rask. Both goaltenders coming up with giant saves here in the last three and a half minutes of the game. Brad Marshawn gains the line against Polyukov. He's got Kelly middle. Marshawn holds the puck. It's off Boise's legs. Hamilton spins it off Boise's shin guard. Kulikov winds his way to the center circle. Off Fleischman and in deep. Chara hesitated. 
And now Barkoff gets to the puck, pulls Fleischman into the middle. Hamilton cuts it off before Boyce can get to the puck. Weaver chips it down the glass. Played with a high stick. The faceoff will be in the Boston zone with 158 left to go. Marshall had the right idea. Drive wide, pull up, and try to find somebody coming late. He was waiting for Dougie Hamilton to get off the bench up through the neutral zone inside the offensive end. That really never materialized. And then Hamilton tried to force one to the net that got blocked down. Keep that puck in the offensive zone. You heard Doug Jarvis talk about it. Keep it moving forward. But if you don't have a lane to the net, don't force it. Keep it deep. Keep the four check alive. Gotch, Huberto, Kopetsky, Gilbert, and Brian Campbell for Florida. The Krejci line with Lucic and again with the wings. Chara and Hamilton has been the first defensive pair out there right now. High bounce with drops right in the crease and scoots wide. Aginla tries to make the feed to Lucic. It's deflected Kopetsky too far forward for Huberto. Hamilton turns on it, has body position. Huberto clips and skates right out from under him, and on they go. And it'll be a face-off in the Boston zone with the puck underneath Dougie Hamilton's leg. Well, again, they'll try to make a play to Lucic in the slot. That didn't work, and then Boston needed to retrieve this puck. Hamilton with good body position. Florida on the four check. Hamilton goes down. Uh, good decision by the referee to blow that play dead. Hamilton on top of the puck. Shire pinning his man. Brick, in their last seven games in this building, the Bruins are 6-1, and one, but three of those six victories have been by shootout. Neither team has been past 60 minutes so far this season. Louis Erickson gains the line. Boy, Chuck's drive out of Thomas and Boylan Smith can't get it over the left pad of Thomas. Krug drives it, St. Thomas loose underneath, and the whistles are so quick tonight. 1.17 to go in the game. It ended up under Thomas's left leg pad, but this was loose before the whistle. Now, Erickson gains the blue line, leaves it for Johnny Boychuk. There's the hard drive that goes in and out of the glove of Thomas. No real angle for Smith on the rebound. But then a turnover and a nice play back to the point for the drive by Krug. And that puck was loose. Looked like it was going to go under Tim Thomas and maybe get a face off, but it was loose when the whistle went. Yep. Now, I should have said after rather than before. Bergeron maneuvering Smith. And now sends him to the hash marks. Krug directly behind. Jugstad uses the big body just to try to barrel past the puck. First run indirect for Krug. Over to Boychuk. He loads up the drive. Love save Thomas with Erickson looking for the grill front tip. Yeah, some players will just stop right at the top of the crease and stand in front of Tim Thomas. Erickson more the goal scorer type looking to get more to the side. Feels he can redirect that puck a better opportunity than being standing directly in front of it. Bruins have 39 shots on goal, equaling the total they had when a red-hot John Sebastian Jaguar thwarted them in Boston. Krug spins the backhand down to the end board. Smith looking for Bergeron and bounces around the slot. Smith's backhand scores! Riley Smith's first as a Bruin may make him the hero of the night. 3-2 Boston with 59 seconds to go. Well, he looks good on this line. Criticized him for the couple of two-on-ones where he tried to force plays when he could have shot the puck, but it starts with a face-off win by who else? Patrice Bergeron. Crew tries to set up point Chuck for the one-timer. Wise decision because it wasn't there. Back to Crew and keep that puck moving forward. Get it deep. Florida will turn the puck over, but it's just great effort by Bergeron to keep the play alive. Smith doesn't stay behind the goal line. The goals are scored in front of the net, and he gets right out front. And he sweeps that back and again, a puck on edge, had eyes through the legs of Tim Thomas. Less than a minute to go in the game. Thomas out near the hash marks. Let's go Bruins, the chant from the Boston fans in the crowd as we took toward half a minute to go. Now Huberto out of his own end. No, Lucic stops him there and bounces one in on Thomas, keeping him between the pipes. 30 seconds left. Campbell off. Gilroy's the charge. Just wants to get a deep end. Does. Thomas is coming out anyway. 
Brian Campbell to the near boards. Fleischman flying out of his own zone. Gives it forward to Versteeg. Versteeg rifles it in on Rask. He makes a blocker stop. Fleischman off the side of the goal. Seidenberg patient with the puck. Chara to the corner. Brian Campbell down there. Versteeg throws it into the crease. One second to go in the Bruins. With a hat of all the way effort. Hang on with a late goal from Riley Smith to win 3-2. Yeah, it looks good on Riley Smith. He's played real well. The coaching staff comfortable by putting him with the Bergeron line and moving Marchand to line number three. A good skater, good hockey IQ. You play with a guy like Bergeron, and if you do the simple things, the fundamental things, play with effort, play with smarts, you're going to get opportunities. And he scores on the backhand very, very late in this game after the Bruins. Had power play opportunity in the third to extend it. Couldn't get it done. They gave up a bad bounce. I know Tuka Rask wasn't happy with the tying goal 2-2, but to pull this one out in regulation now gives you a chance to sweep the Florida trip. The Audi key play is brought to you by your local New England Audi dealers. The clock ticking under a minute to go. Patrice Bergeron nudges the puck to Riley Smith, and he wiggles it through. Tim Thomas, Bergeron going one against four, and Smith finds the puck, and he will be the hero of the evening with his first as a member of the Boston Bruins. Nine Bruins with points tonight. Tuka Rask making 27 saves. The save of the game brought to you by Digital Federal Credit Union. What can DCU save you? First period, Thomas Fleischman finding a seam going through. Forehand, backhand, but Rask makes the quick adjustment and takes away the glove side of the goal. So the Bruins right the ship after having lost two out of three. Florida now has dropped six out of seven. The final in Sunrise, 3-2 Boston. Dale. Thank you, Jack. Well, we're hoping it's a big Boston sports night, and we've got all the details of this one. Ace Ticket Bruins Overtime Live coming up in just a couple of minutes. Bruins beat Tim Thomas with a goal in the final minute. Claude Julian will go one-on-one -on -one with Jamie Erdahl to talk about it. And an opening night rematch. Ace Ticket Bruins Overtime Live coming up in just a couple of minutes.